Over the first two weeks of the season, it has been the tale of two running back rooms for the Texans. So let's take a look at why there was such a difference between week one and two from the running back room. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to this bullpen bit. I am James Roy. And as always, this is the bullpen, a show where we talk about Texans, Texans and Texans. This is a shorter episode for the middle of the week. Tom and I do full recaps and previews and live shows during the week. So make sure you're subscribed to the bullpen wherever you get your podcasts so that you can dial in. Let's talk about the Texans running back room. Week one left a lot of reason for hope in a position that felt like it really hindered the Texans ability to function as an offense throughout the 2023 season as good as Devin Singletary did coming in and filling in what was supposed to be Damian Pierce's promised role as the Texans go-to running back. It still felt like there was something lacking. And I think if we look at the 2023 season, we can see why, especially when we compare it to what we've gotten through the first two weeks of 2024. The Texans totaled over 200 rushing yards between all the running backs in the room against Indianapolis in week one. Joe Mixon, 160 yards rushing, averaged five yards per carry. There wasn't a single running back in the room. I, you know, CJ Stroud is the only person who carried the ball that averaged less than five yards per carry. And overall, the Texans running game looked really good. And then we turn to week two and we see them put up 75 yards total. Cam Akers... As good as he did, he averaged five yards per carry, had his fumble, and Joe Mixon got hurt somewhere in the middle of the game. But even so, with nine carries for 30 yards, didn't even break two, uh, three yards per carry. It just looked really rough, and it made the offense look one-dimensional in week two. So why was there such a huge difference between the two? We can look at a lot of different things. We can look at the fact that maybe the Bears run defense is that much better than the Colts run defense. The Colts did give up 160 yards in the first quarter to the Packers the following week. We could also look at how the Texans offensive line shaped up the second week. It was mostly the same. The only thing that changed was the fact that Juice Scruggs was not starting at center. So when we look at those factors, I think we can call back to the 2023 season for our answer to why this Texans running game looked so different week to week. <laughs> I think you can look at the difference in the in the run defenses and, and count that as a factor. The the Colts run defense is just not very good. So it was it was pretty much guaranteed that if the Texans had somewhat of an improvement over the offseason in the running back room that they would probably be able to take advantage of the Colts run defense or lack thereof. But what really sticks out to me is that for a lot of games last season, Juice Scruggs did not play center. And while the story of the season last season was the Texans offensive line being incredibly injured, a rotating door at a lot of different positions and you know just persevering in spite of it, performing at what some would say was not a very good level, but what I'll say is was a high level for what they had. The the rotating, you know, carousel of offensive linemen that the Texans had, really they shouldn't have been able to do as good as they did at any facet of blocking based off of what they were working with. But they, you know, persisted and made it through. And in week one of 2024, the Texans had what was the promised offensive line to start 2023 before the injuries started hitting to Kenyon Green and all. Um, so looking at this season, Kenyon Green's obviously still in and, and was a big factor, I think, to what affected last season. But I think maybe a lot of people have underestimated Juice Scruggs' importance to the Texans run game. <clears throat> you 
Now, another thing to consider week in and week out is that Damian Pierce did not play week two and Cam Akers did. Um, I think the fumble makes a huge difference situationally, but overall, I don't think the difference between Cam Akers and Damian Pierce is super notable. And that's to say that Damian Pierce averaged five yards per carry on three carries the week prior. Um, Cam Akers also averaged five yards per carry in week two when he played. So I don't know if the difference between those two running backs was enough to make a significant impact on why the Texans running back room didn't function to the level that it probably should have. <clears throat> Looking down the line, I mean, with the with the Vikings, that really the first six games of the season are supposed to be the easiest stretch the Texans have. Um, Tom and I have recently discussed how the Vikings, maybe with Sam Darnold's emergence and and factoring in what Brian Flores is as a defensive coordinator, could have a huge impact on how easy that first stretch of games is, along with the fact that the Dolphins maybe aren't as hard of a matchup as they were perceived to be at the start of the season. Um, I think that this Texans team stands to maybe... You know, I don't think that the, the performance in week one was always going to be sustainable. And I don't think that the performance in week two is indicative of what we should see from this Texans running back room moving forward. I think that we'll probably meet in the middle. And I think that pretty regularly, maybe not every game, we should expect at least the combination of the running backs in the room to put up 100 yards and perform at that level. And, and, it, and it all comes down to um, situational gameplay, which is to say that with the week one, another thing that I think hindered the Colts from playing adequate and effective run defense was the threat of CJ Stroud as a passer combined with the the, the unknown of what the Texans run game was. So uh, in the first 16 runs that Joe Mixon had, 14 of them were to light box. So um, I think that as teams adjust, maybe the playing that matchup, Bobby Slowick will run the ball regardless, but seeing whether or not the teams are going to more respect C.J. Stroud as a passer or the Texans' ability to run will affect how the game evolves. But I think what really went wrong in Week 2 was also, aside from the mix-up on the offensive line, was the abandoning of the run due to injury, due to the the flow of the game and, and the way that the Bears played the Texans throughout the game. So I don't anticipate that moving forward it'll continue to be an issue. Um, but it really truly was a tale of two very different games in terms of running backs. You know, Joe Mixon coming off of a player of the week performance for the AFC to just being basically a non-factor in, you know, when he was given the rock. <sighs> well, this has been a bullpen bit and I've been James Roy. Thanks for tuning in. As always, you can find me at James Roy NFL on Twitter and at, uh, N1 Texans fan on Instagram. Uh, make sure you follow the bullpen at the bullpen cast on now YouTube because I we changed the handle on YouTube for that and on uh, Instagram and Twitter. So yeah, make sure you tap in. <clears throat> As always, stay classy, Houston, and vamos Texans. <laughs>